What's your name again? Amy. Amy, you're Amy B. Oh, give us another hug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Thank oh. you. Oh, gosh. Oh, yes. <laughs> years and years. I know. <laughs> and here we are. Oh. And for the future and how many more years we're still going to follow where he goes. Yeah. Uh, hopefully not in America. Hopefully back at home in Australia well, with uh, his family. <laughs> no expedition. Hey, Julian, no expedition. Yeah, you've got a nice face for a man who's got a lifetime of struggle behind him. <laughs> <laughs> you think it'd be turned down at the no, side? No, you just get a bigger sense of humour. <laughs> OK, OK, that's what you need in this game. Yeah. There is only one decision. No extradition. It's working. Ah, that's the, uh, I was in Thank Stockholm you. with the Chileans. They're very strong supporters yesterday. Right. Right. And we did a big march through the main street. The 300 of us, that's their chance. I don't think so, it's kind of like, uh, uh, I could get it too, yeah, and I was a yeah, carpenter. Yeah, yeah. Oh, was you? Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you're one step up from bricky, that's a bit more of a trade. Oh, the skill. carpenters are bothersome, oh, yeah, they're yeah, always yeah, following yeah. rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bricky, no, brickies are great, though, I have yeah. a go at anything. Not to believe these soft hands used to lay bricks, though, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome everyone, welcome at this amazing opportunity to honour Julian Assange, fairly imprisoned inside those walls at Belmont's prison today. We have an amazing award ceremony here, we have compassion to pair, Eileen Chuck is going to come here and give an amazing award for Julian Assange. John Shipton, Julian's dad, will receive the award uh, in Julian's absence. So I'd like to invite Eileen to come well done, Today we pay tribute to Julian Assange, but first I must pay tribute to all those who've supported him, turned out in all weathers, and most of all refused to let the lies win. As long as there are people willing to stand up for truth, there is hope for this planet. I dedicated this award to my friend Gavin, who was passionate about great journalism being a power for good, to give a voice to whistleblowers so the truth can be told no matter how inconvenient that truth is. There are only four words that really matter in this tribute. Free Julian Assange now. This is all about really defending freedom of speech and we know that freedom of speech is under attack and the greatest exponent, the greatest advocate for freedom of speech is Julian Assange who's languishing in solitary confinement in Belmarsh prison. That is a stain on the British state. So we have a moral duty it seems to me to fight on behalf of Julian Assange whose only crime is to expose war crimes by the United States of America and the abuse of state power. And here we have a situation where somebody who we should be venerating, who we should be celebrating, is being forced to endure solitary confinement, which is tantamount to torture, torture taking place on British soil, this, this cannot be allowed to stand. Hello everybody, friends, I'll, I'll address you as friends if I may. Julian's treatment by the, well you could hardly call it justice, the uh, Crown Prosecuting Authority is a sordid treachery from top to bottom. Judge Arbuthnot gave a hysterical, elated, callous summing up, saying that if Julian missed out on sunshine, he should stand on the balcony. The next nasty piece to come along was a, a judge by the name of Phillips, who Julian had just been uh, three days dragged out of the embassy and Phillips uh, 
had seen Julian for about five minutes, and uh, he his uh, degree is in law, but he fancied himself as a psychologist and said that Julian is a narcissist. I mean, these people are absurd. How do they get work? On a, a, a positive note, I believe that with your help, we will win. I've no doubt we will win. outside the embassy for playing an Australian song uh, Waltz and Matilda. So I'm going to play this for Julian. Bravo, bravo. Take him home. Academics and artists held an event in the British capital, London, condemning the continued incarceration of Julian Assange on Thursday. Julian Assange is not being punished for anything he has done wrong. He is being punished for everything he has done right. This, this is what they call no-touch torture, crucifixion in slow motion. And while Julian Assange is the instrument what they are attempting to crucify is the truth, is the inner workings of the powerful. We have to take the initiative to place pressure on the levers of power in this country to release Julian Assange and please let's set about deconstructing 
this horrific relationship that exists between the unaccountable deep state and the public. Our taxes are used to, be, to kill people all around the world. We need to stop that. Thank you very much. The pursuit of Julian Assange is not about rape. It's the US government weaponizing and distorting rape in order to punish him for the WikiLeaks exposés on war crimes, rape and torture. In 2010 and 2012, we pointed to the unusual zeal with which Julian Assange was being pursued. It's unlike any other rape investigation we've seen anywhere. Rape and other sexual allegations have been used to pursue a political agenda from the start, intent on actually hiding rape, hiding torture, and hiding murder committed by the state. If this were about applying the law, then the UK would actually grant him the right to prepare his defense. If this were about applying the law, Julian Assange today would not be detained in a high security prison now that he has served his sentence and the only reason for him to be detained is to be in preventive detention in relation to that extradition proceeding. He would not be in a high security prison under oppressive conditions of isolation and surveillance. So, this is important. It is about democracy, it is about the rule of law, and we need to defend this. This case is emblematic, it sets a precedent. If, the tr if, if saying the truth becomes a crime, then this will not just have a chilling effect on journalism, it will do away with it. We will then very soon live under censorship and inevitably also under tyranny. I spent two hours with Julian today in Belmarsh Prison. When we greet each other, I can feel his ribs. His arm has no muscle. He has lost perhaps 10 to 15 kilos in weight since April. When I first saw him in Belmarsh, what was most shocking was how much older he looked I think I'm going out of my mind, he said then. I said to him, no you're not. Look how you frighten them. Julian's intellect, resilience, and sense of humor are, I believe, protecting him. But for how long, I don't know. The US may have come for only one of them, Julian Assange, but the warning could not be clearer. They can come for the rest. If free journalists, free people, and I dare say free governments, allow this outrage to continue against justice and democracy. John, how are you going knowing that your son's in jail? And he, we saw him a couple of weeks ago and he looked like he was struggling. Uh, well, you know, he's uh, been uh, locked up now for nine months in a maximum security prison, which is... Uh, uh, not good circumstance from a, a man who's been uh, suffering persecution for about nine years now by a number of states.
the psychological effects and consequently the physical effects. He's lost about 15 kilo, about 30 pounds. We uh, look forward very much to when the uh, United Kingdom, the government, will improve his circumstances and to the uh, February court case where I'm sure uh, the judiciary will see that it's to their benefit that Julian is free. Do, do you think the British... And let's keep chanting, don't extradite! Don't extradite! Don't extradite! One decision! One decision! And the first speaker tonight is a very important voice, perhaps the most important voice we could possibly invite here tonight. It's John Shipton, Julian Assange's dad, with Dylan Shipton, Julian Assange's cousin. And John has been to see Julian Assange in Belmarsh Prison this afternoon. Thank you, John. Um, this is Dylan, this is uh, Julian's cousin. Uh, 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 um, uh, uh, uh. So, uh, from uh, Belmarsh this afternoon, Julian sends his greetings and appreciation for your strength and determination to free him from Belmarsh and allow him to return to the bosom of his family. Now, all of his family are gathered together here in London uh, to uh, carry the fight forward. Not only can we win, but let me tell you, we are winning the, the New York Times editorial that he ought not to be extradited. The Guardian at last coming around seeing the light that Julian ought not to be extradited. The Parliament in Australia coming around and saying that Julian or to return home to Australia as quickly as possible. The, the Italian government, who I meet uh, on Thursday, uh, forming a committee uh, to encourage the United, the United Kingdom to bring Julian home. So I want to thank you all, and uh, we will win this. This is a war on whistleblowers. This is a war on Europe's democracy. And this is not just a UK issue. It is about freedom of press. It is about freedom of speech. It is about human rights. It is about democracy. Check. Okay, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to say a few words in support and in solidarity with Julian Assange. As mentioned, I stand here as an ex-political prisoner from Chile, from the Pinochet dictatorship. After spending um, over a year in prison, I was granted asylum and refugee status in this country when the atmosphere for receiving refugees was certainly a lot different than what it is today. But more importantly, I stand here also as a Latin American 
who, together with my cameras at an American, want to uh, show our respect and our solidarity to Julian Assange, to this brave man who had the courage to denounce the interference of the United States, the CIA, in the business of certainly Latin America and many other countries in the world. If, he, if we had had a Julian Assange in the 70s, perhaps who, who had released the documents that had only been released, some of them after 40 years, denouncing the interference of the CIA in the masterminding of the coup in Chile. Perhaps if we had had a Julian Assange then, many lives would have been saved and many of our cameras who are now disappeared will be with us today. So I wish we had many more Julian Assange. And just to say that we really uh, want to make sure that he, he knows that he's got the respect and, and our love and our friendship and whatever we can offer him to help him with, the, with his release. Thank you very much, uh, friends and cameras. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange has appeared at a British court for an initial hearing over an extradition request from the US. This comes just a day after he was sentenced to 50 weeks in jail for breaching bail. The US Justice Department said Assange was arrested for allegedly conspiring with former Army intelligence analyst Chelsea Manning to gain access to hundreds of thousands of military reports about the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. No! No extradition. Julian, amigo, Ecuador está contigo. Julian, amigo, Ecuador está contigo. Julian, amigo, Ecuador está contigo. Despite what you heard from the prosecutor in the courtroom today, this case is not about hacking. This case is about a journalist and a publisher who had conversations with a source about accessing material, encouraged that source to provide material, and spoke to that source about how to protect their identity. This is protected activity that journalists engage in all the time. And any prosecution and extradition of Mr. Assange for having done so, or alleged to have done so, will place a massive chill on investigative journalism the world over. For the last week since, since he was arrested. He has spent uh, 23 out of 24 hours a day in his cell most of the time. That is what we call in general terms solitary confinement. That's unacceptable. And that applies to most of the prisoners in that appalling facility. <laughs>
Um, welcome back. It's ah, yeah. good to see you, Mo. It's good. Yeah. Now, last time we met, we were outside Westminster. It's a bit of a crowd there for the uh, Supreme Court decision on, uh, on whether the Parliament had the right to say yes or no to Boris Johnson. I seem to remember that. That's right. That's actually a very good memory. There was a demonstration outside of court. We're on our way right now to Belmarsh Prison, where yeah. you're, you're scheduled to, to meet your son. Yeah. When's the last time you saw him? About uh, eight weeks past now, last time I was in the UK. Um, so uh, I saw Julian and then caught the plane uh, straight up the way. Yeah. And, and what was his condition like? Uh, pretty dire. I mean, Nils Melzer's and the, the doctors, the 160 doctors, uh, their uh, analysis or diagnosis is pretty sharp. You know. And uh, what did you speak about last time you saw him? Oh, generally, we, uh, over the last 10 years, just uh, we've both uh, developed a liking for gossip because of Julian's uh, isolation means that, uh, you, know, you know, what people are doing becomes really interesting. Uh, um, so we gossip away and talk about children and wives and mothers and girlfriends uh, and yeah, that sort of stuff. Uh, I don't know if you heard recently that uh, Assange, or you almost certainly heard, that he's been removed from solitary confinement and that's a product of lobbying both by his lawyers, but apparently also three separate petitions written by fellow prisoners? Yes, I heard that. Uh, it's extraordinary when the, the prisoners have more ethics than uh, three governments, or four governments, the U UK, Sweden, Australia, and the US. And the prisoners uh, take up petitions to have Julian moved out of solitary and into company. Yeah, it's extraordinary. Um, if there's something that you would want people to understand about uh, your son, what would that be? Oh, I mean, just uh, his courage and integrity in providing a cornucopia of riches to ordinary people everywhere to access what governments do or are not doing to actual facts that they can review themselves and discuss amongst themselves and come to a, a conclusion of how to support a government or how not to support a government. How much time are you going to get with him this time round? Uh, probably an hour and a half. Uh, there's uh, high definition cameras, so we, we will find that we have to speak like that uh, so that they can't lip read. Really? Oh, so you have to, you speak under your breath? So we just uh, hold it like that so you can't see the lips move. It's not the volume of sound, and the high definition cameras are in the ceiling, about a dozen of them actually. Are you able to describe, let's say, for people who, who don't know, who can't know, what it's like as a, as a father to go through what you're going through, what you've been through? Oh, well, it's... You get a bit driven, Mo. Um, the greater the insults to Julian and members of my family, the stronger I become uh, and the more determined. So I no longer count the cost. And I think, um, I think um, other fathers and mothers, of course, would recognize that feeling that you don't count the cost to yourself. Whatever it costs, you do even unto, um, without being too overly dramatic, Mo, even unto death, you just don't count the cost.